Uh, so our today's uh, meeting uh, uh, is going to present uh, recent results uh, of excavations on, on three uh, important uh, uh, Eastern desert sites. So this uh, includes Berenica, uh, Mons uh, Smaragdus uh, region and uh, uh, Nubt in uh, Sudan. Uh, what is common uh, for, to these places is uh, um, association of these uh, sites with a specific uh, uh, ethnic uh, group, uh, so-called uh, uh, Blemians, or uh, in uh, literature, uh, they are also uh, sometimes called Eastern Desert uh, Dwellers. And the problem is that uh, actually uh, we still uh, know very uh, little about the uh, their burial habits, especially in the uh, Eastern Desert uh, region and uh, uh, Eastern Desert uh, um, mountains. And this is uh, rather surprising that uh, we have uh, uh, lots of information on the burial practices of this uh, uh, population in the Upper Egypt and Lower Nubia, uh, where some uh, tumuli graves were excavated in the uh, past uh, uh, decades uh, um, and uh, right now they're the reference point, not the motherland uh, of those uh, 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 populations which resided uh, uh, mostly in the eastern desert for uh, actually a, a millennia or even more. So uh, the state of uh, our research in the field of uh, mortuary archaeology is uh, definitely not uh, satisfying uh, in case of the eastern deserts, especially comparing to the uh, uh, Nile Valley, uh, for example, and uh, uh, there are some uh, of, uh, topics uh, which we have to uh, 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 um, try to elaborate. Uh, definitely the location of the burial is not the one. It, it seems clear for us uh, right now that uh, in this region, uh, the burials were located uh, usually outside uh, the settlements, but the bigger problem uh, is the organization of the cemeteries. Uh, already uh, recently, a uh, team of uh, uh, Knut Krzywinski has um, studied this problem in uh, Nupt, uh, so we will have uh, insight of uh, results uh, in this uh, uh, matter, but uh, still on the other sides in the eastern desert, um, the approach which was introduced by uh, Knut Krzywinski uh, is not uh, done yet, so we don't have um, uh, any co comparison uh, uh, which uh, could give us information about existing patterns or the development uh, uh, during a few uh, uh, millennia, uh, few uh, centuries of existing uh, uh, existence of Berenica uh, Nupt, for example. Uh, mm, the question about the uh, diversity of uh, uh, forms of graves were never posted, actually. Uh, it was, uh, uh, for most of the research, pretty obvious that the typical and uh, mm, mm, uh, type of graves are tumuli, uh, which are actually very characteristic for the uh, Eastern Desert uh, region. But uh, recent uh, uh, research in Berenica showed that the co this uh, is not uh, so simple. Uh, we get uh, much more uh, a varied uh, situation concerning the uh, form of uh, grace. Uh, the bigger, uh, bigger issues, uh, issues is the question about the body preparation, disposal of the body and uh, position. Uh, this uh, information is lacking because of uh, uh, that, that most of those uh, recognized already uh, tombs were uh, wrapped in the uh, past. So we don't have uh, a good uh, assemblages uh, preserved uh, in situ, but Hopefully, uh, research both in uh, Berenica and uh, among Smaragdus region uh, will help us to change this uh, situation. Uh, orientation of the uh, grave, especially pit uh, uh, graves, is also uh, a big question mark. Uh, still, we have uh, very few excavated uh, uh, graves of this uh, type, so uh, it's hard to say if there is a, uh, any pattern in the orientation of this. Uh, mm, burials uh, in the eastern uh, desert. Uh, problematic is also the uh, uh, our no knowledge about uh, uh, equipment of the uh, burials uh, mm, and what was uh, used inside the uh, graves by uh, those who were visiting uh, them. 
uh, the problem is uh, the same. The uh, grapes were robbed. Uh, 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 so we don't have a clear insight uh, uh, about uh, this uh, uh, aspect of um, mortuary uh, practices. But again, hopefully, uh, very soon we will change the situation and already uh, we have some progress. And uh, if we gather all of this information at some point, hopefully in, during the next uh, three years, uh, maybe we'll get uh, an idea about how homogeneous uh, was the mortuary practice uh, in this uh, region. So uh, this is the major uh, topic which we should concentrate in our further uh, research. Also, we should uh, remember about the uh, important uh, research field, which is uh, uh, still underrepresented in the Eastern Desert, this um, uh, bioarchaeological approach. Uh, it's very rudimentary, uh, but gives us uh, uh, in incredibly important information about, uh, for example, sex and age, which has uh, a very uh, clear connection with the uh, uh, burial uh, habits, because so uh, we can expect uh, uh, different uh, goods uh, in the case of uh, women and men uh, graves. Also, we can uh, expect different burial habits in a uh, case of uh, sub-adults uh, comparing to the uh, adults. Uh, also, osteological material could bring us in the future uh, more information about the way of living of the uh, local uh, population, uh, which uh, uh, right now uh, is uh, a missing uh, piece of the puzzle which we're trying to uh, uh, finish. Um, let's have a closer look on the Berenike right now as an introduction to the first part of the, uh, our meeting. So as you can see, uh, Berenike is uh, in the south uh, western uh, or lower uh, right corner of this uh, map. Uh, all of you know that it was uh, one of the most important uh, ports on the Red Sea, uh, responsible for the uh, uh, transportation of goods from the Indian Ocean to the Mediterranean and back forth. Um, and where it's important, this uh, part was uh, established already in the uh, Hellenistic time, but uh, definitely it expanded uh, in the uh, uh, early Roman period, um, uh, thanks to the uh, Roman administration and uh, uh, involvement of uh, Roman uh, army. Um, uh, but uh, this has drastically seems to be uh, changed uh, at the end of the third century. Uh, when the uh, Roman administration have uh, moved out from large part of the Eastern desert. And uh, uh, this authority is, seems to be replaced by a new indigenous, uh, those uh, uh, Blemians, which were mentioned uh, at the beginning. Uh, they took uh, control over the uh, uh, Berenike. Uh, we know this uh, uh, thanks to the uh, written sources. Um, and uh, uh, they started to uh, control the uh, uh, trafficking uh, goods uh, 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 trade, which were uh, going through the uh, Berenica. Um, uh, over here, we have the map of the site uh, itself uh, uh, with the post-Roman town on the uh, right uh, side and uh, the uh, remains of the Hellenistic forts, which are seen the central and the southwestern part of the Berenike. Uh, but what is important uh, for us is this um, uh, actually rather small necropolis on the uh, northwestern uh, 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 part of the site. It constitutes of uh, two uh, natural mounds. Uh, this is the first one, Sorton, and the second one, the Northern. Uh, between them, we have this uh, path or simply road, which was leading to the town in the ancient uh, times. During 2021 uh, season, uh, we uh, started to uh, work uh, um, in different parts of this uh, area. We opened uh, five uh, trenches. The first one was the trench uh, 44, which was actually uh, started, uh, which was uh, first excavated in 2001 by Ivona Zich, and she uh, was able to uh, finish her work over here after 20 years. Uh, right next to this trench, we uh, opened uh, another one, 147. Uh, it was a big one, but we only uh, concentrated on uh, removing the uh, top uh, soil uh, to uncover the 
uh, uh, upper parts of uh, uh, walls of structures, which are uh, over here and are right now marked on the uh, blue. Uh, the other trench, 144, uh, and adjacent to its uh, uh, a forecourt, 145, was excavated by Emilia Smagur. Uh, and she will give you uh, more details about this uh, very soon. The last trench was located on the southern side uh, over here. Uh, over here, we found just a single uh, pit uh, grave. But, uh, making some preliminary summarization of, uh, summary of the first uh, uh, regular season on the northwestern necropolis. Uh, I have to admit that uh, we make a, a great progress about uh, uh, in the field of understanding of the uh, mortuary uh, uh, practices in uh, Berenica itself. Obviously, it's, this is just a beginning, uh, but uh, already we have uh, very uh, um, clear evidence, for example, for the cemetery or organization. We have seen this plan. Those uh, build structures are aligned uh, to each other. So it gives us an impression that uh, it wasn't a haphazard uh, building ac activity over, uh, at that part of the site. It was uh, uh, definitely uh, organized. Uh, besides uh, already known to Muli from uh, south uh, western part of Berenica, we added a new type of uh, graves, uh, like uh, this uh, chamber tomb seen on the upper part of the uh, slide. Um, and uh, uh, Ivona also managed to uh, uh, uncover two shaft tombs, which are uh, uh, haven't been expected in this uh, part of uh, Egypt. Also, we get uh, clear evidence for use of uh, ossuaries, and so this shows that uh, in some cases the burial uh, was much more complicated, and it in included a few stages of uh, rebullia of the uh, remains of the body. Also, uh, we uh, encountered uh, amphoras uh, with uh, child burials, which shows us that uh, the specific uh, uh, different way of burying the uh, subadult. Um, we get uh, very uh, uh, small, uh, very uh, limited evidence on uh, dressing or shrouding of the uh, uh, those who were buried in uh, Berenic after this uh, season, but uh, hopefully uh, in uh, uh, near future we get uh, more textiles and fragments of ledgers which uh, could be associated with the uh, deceased. Uh, beside the uh, extended position, uh, which is uh, already well uh, attested in Berenike, uh, we get a, also a clear evidence of a flexed position. And I will uh, continue this topic in a few uh, seconds. And what is also great from the point of uh, from the um, uh, from the point of view of archaeology, we get uh, we have found lots of uh, uh, nice material culture, uh, including altars, uh, pottery vessels, uh, and uh, different kind of furrings, which uh, help us to reconstruct the uh, rituals which were um, performed during the burial on uh, after it uh, during the commemoration of the already. Uh, that uh, uh, person. All of this gives, uh, give us a very heterogeneous uh, uh, picture of the burial habits in uh, uh, Berenica. Uh, I would like to refer also to the only uh, um, so single one uh, 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 um, written sources referring to the burial habits of the residents of uh, Eastern Desert. Uh, it was written in the uh, second century uh, BC, and uh, it was uh, uh, preserved to our times thanks uh, to only Diodorus and uh, Photius, which uh, those authors copied the ordinal uh, text. This uh, uh, fragment uh, is mentioning two important uh, 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 burial habits, uh, which fit very well to uh, what we uh, know from Berenike and maybe soon from other uh, archaeological sites in the region. The first fold is the, uh, um, how uh, the graves uh, were built uh, in the Eastern Desert. It's information about that they uh, just put this heap of stones. Uh, and the other thing is uh, that uh, the part of the burial ritual was uh, tying uh, neck with the legs. 
And in one of the uh, tombs uh, uh, excavated last year, it seems we have a, a clear confirmation of continuation of this uh, habit uh, in the fourth, uh, uh, fifth century uh, AD. You can see this on these uh, photos on the uh, right uh, side, uh, where uh, we get articulated uh, bodies, uh, bodies of uh, skeletons. Uh, you can see the uh, ribs are in a correct position, the vertebrae are uh, creating a line, uh, the head is in a proper uh, position in, in case of both the burials, but uh, the legs uh, are uh, flexed. They're, the knees are just flexed uh, right next to the uh, head. So it seems that uh, uh, in this case, uh, um, those uh, bodies were uh, bounded uh, in a specific way. Was it this uh, uh, why the, well, these whites of crystal, we, we cannot uh, be sure because uh, most of the organics uh, in that part of Syria are not preserved, but uh, definitely this position is not a natural uh, one and it uh, uh, needs a special attention. Uh, at the end, I want to uh, uh, have one more remark. Uh, that we have to keep in mind that uh, what we did already in Berenica is just a beginning. Um, the southwestern uh, necropolis is over here. Here is the uh, post-Roman uh, town. But you can see that uh, we have uh, um, these lots of uh, bloom markers on the left side. This is actually the southwestern necropolis, uh, which was constituted um, um, uh, and actually a uh, uh, tumuli uh, filled uh, something around uh, 600 structures of this type were uh, identified in this uh, area and dated also to the post-Roman uh, period. Uh, you can see on the uh, satellite image um, uh, that uh, there are some of them are secluded like this one and so uh, some are creating a cluster and still uh, this area is uh, not uh, uh, um, studied uh, uh, all. So a uh, big piece of uh, information about uh, ritual habits of residents of uh, post-Roman Romania, uh, Berenica, uh, are still uh, missing. Uh, uh, so what uh, we uh, achieved uh, recently definitely is just a uh, something very preliminary. And uh, to gain a, a, a proper uh, big picture of these uh, um, burial habits at that at the site, uh, definitely we have to continue our works for uh, uh, many years. Okay, uh, 